Hello reformers and welcome back to Freeman. Now when we left off we took quite a risk really and uh, took on a couple of generals. Obviously those generals are not really the greatest units you're going to find just yet because of course they belong to the Chinivkin civilian front or whatever they may be and uh, they're not the greatest but they are going to help us out because you know, they're units that cannot die, and they can be equipped with some very, very good weaponry. Now, I mention them at the moment because, obviously, I, has, I still don't have access to Yuri just yet, but we're going to be able to recruit him as soon as we lose a couple of units, which is, well, not the greatest way to look at things, obviously, but, well, that's just the reality of it. Anyway... I don't know whether you can see right here, but I have replaced almost all of our squad's icons with the actual icons of the majority unit that they have in each of these squads. In other words, if a squad has the majority of Posner sharpshooters, then they're going to have the Posner sharpshooter icon. And that's exactly what I've done here. And you can see actually that we have predominantly huge amounts of Posner sharpshooters and ARF spec ops guys, and they are going to be well, extremely, extremely efficient at what they do. So we're going to continue to spawn everyone that we can in here because we actually have a pretty large battle on our hands. And we're going to try, if we can, to do a, cut, a little bit of tactics. Obviously, these guys are not exactly great. You know, they're, they're not going to be extremely difficult to take out. So it's really not going to be too difficult for us. But we're going to... We're going to try our best to get a little bit of an extra something something going on here. So basically what we're doing right now is we're just splitting up these two squads right now and putting them at the basically at the front line here. And maybe what we want to do actually is now that I'm taking a bit of a closer look at the environment, we really don't want them to go down into this little little hole here because that's not really going to give them any kind of benefit. And uh, let's put these guys up here as well. I think this is probably going to be slightly better for them. And then we're going to take these squads over here with our other companion, of course, and we're going to try and do something else with them. So I'm going to just take them around here. Let's place them around this little rock there. And let's take these and do a little bit of a flank. Nothing nothing too extravagant. You know, I'm not, not trying to do anything extremely fancy here because in general, doing flanking actions... Yes, while it is perfectly acceptable for the most part, uh, it's not its not really going to do too much, especially considering we generally have much, much greater firepower, much better equipment and gear than our opponent, and uh, it's generally... it's generally just us being absolute beasts and being able to, well, should we say... Our forces are absolute beasts because we have so many Spec Ops guys and FCA Grenadiers and Poznan Sharpshooters and things like that that it's really very, very, it's going to be very difficult for the enemy to actually do anything. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know whether you can notice, but it's actually really dark, isn't it? So I'm going to turn on my night vision. Let's not look into the moon, though, because that's, that's very bright over there. So let's just be a little bit careful about that. It, oh, yeah, the enemies are going to show up like nothing else. Look at that. Can you see them over there? They're little silhouettes. Oh, I actually hit someone from over there. That's pretty amazing. All right, so let's try and take a little bit of cover over by these rocks here, because that's obviously going to be something that we want to make sure of. We want to make sure that we don't get hit by a couple of stray bullets. It's happened before, and it will happen again, no doubt. Now, there we go. There's an armored marauder we took out. That's pretty good. And, whoa, okay. Smoke grenades going on. Yeah, look at that. That's crazy. It's really nice that the night vision actually illuminates that because it kind of gives you an idea as to what's going on environmentally and uh, I think that's actually a thing that's probably going to be happening a lot more of in future updates and uh, speaking of future updates actually they've just released a little bit of a preview not, not a preview build but they've released a preview of what is actually upcoming in the new patch which is uh, according to them going to be released in about a week and uh, I'm very much looking forward to that because apparently it's going to introduce much better campaign balance. In other words, it's going to make the campaign difficulty much more streamlined. 
and it's going to add a whole bunch of new scopes and it's going to just be just adding more of more good stuff and uh, that's exactly what we want isn't it you know adding more good stuff fixing a couple of bugs here and there and uh, i very much hope that they uh, they fix the invisible wall thing that uh, we experienced in a previous episode because obviously that's that's kind of it's kind of harsh to encounter something like that definitely because well you know it's never fun to run into an invisible wall full of guys that are going to be uh, you know, just being completely safe behind that wall and obviously, you know, you not being able to kill them and everything and uh, them being able to kill you. So that's obviously a bit of an issue, but I'm sure that they've already fixed that, I guess, kind of, maybe. <laughs> well, hopefully they have. Otherwise, I'm very looking forward to seeing their new changes as well because they are going to be adding some more interactables on the world map as well. So in other words, farms and industrial complexes and other things like that. I don't exactly know whether they're going to be enterable. In other words, I don't know whether you can fight in specific maps regarding those things. I don't think that's going to be the case. Because personally, I think what's going to happen is it will probably be similar to maybe villages in Mountain Blade. And, uh, well, that's the thing. I'm actually fine with that. With the exception of maybe we could have... Mm, I, these are just my... It's just kind of loose thoughts right now. But thinking maybe if a party is close by and you interact with that party nearby a village or something like that, then maybe it takes on a little bit more of like an industrial sort of look to it. Because if you are right next to it, and it's an industrial complex in this particular situation, then maybe the map should reflect that. So, I don't know whether that's actually possible. It probably is, but yeah, as I say, I'm not, I'm not exactly knowledgeable about, you know, making games and modding and things like that, so it's obviously, you know, a little bit preliminary, but I think that's a pretty cool idea. Otherwise, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take all this loot and uh, we're going to move on. Oh, yes, this FCA guard is going to be joining us. Thank you. I actually cannot take more men. I'm just going to imprison more of them, apparently. We didn't lose anyone there, did we? I don't think... Oh, no, we did actually lose... We did actually lose someone, but unfortunately, it seems like it's a bit weird because my leadership skill is at six. I'm actually hoping... Am I going to level up soon? Where's my... Oh, there's my XP. Oh, okay, so I actually have... Wow. Uh, quite a bit to go. Quite a bit to go. Oh, well. Never mind. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and try and take a Zinkov in this episode. And we'll see what we can do about that. And uh, Yuri is still here, just waiting to be recruited, among other people. And, uh, well, I, I guess this is actually okay because it gives us a pretty decent kind of, shall we say, uh, stockpile, I suppose, a bit of a, a backup, quite a few reinforcements, so to speak. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to try and use the dead of night to uh, give us a little bit of an advantage here in our attack of the Chinivkin Front Rebellion's last base, and we're going to try and take it with that advantage. I don't exactly know whether it's really an advantage if all of our units can, cannot see either. I don't know whether they can see just as well as I can because they're AI. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit... I don't really know about that, but hopefully the enemy is going to have a couple of problems actually seeing anything anyway, so we'll, we'll just cross our fingers and hope that that's the case. Anyway, I'm going to take these FCA Grenadiers with Anna, and uh, we're actually going to place them uh, probably, you know what, probably around here somewhere, around those trees. So let's just move them a little bit like so. And we're just going to spread them out a little bit like this. And we don't want them to be, you know, too shielded or anything like that. I mean, yes, you know, it's perfectly fine for them to be shielded, but I don't want them to not be able to really shoot because if they're in the trees, then they might have some difficulties with, you know, line of sight and everything. But anyway, let's uh, let's get some of these Spec Ops guys, and they're going to go around with our companion. And uh, I'm actually wondering which way is the best way to go. Probably this way, right? I would say probably this way because it gives you a little bit more cover, but it also does tend to maybe give the enemy more vantage points. Because on the one hand... You have some low sweeping valleys here, and you also do have a couple of hills. And those hills 
are going to be pretty useful for us if we actually take advantage of them. But if we don't take advantage of them, then, well, that's just how it is. Okay, so we're going to start splitting people up now. Like so. Let's do something like this. And then we are going to put them into the trees eventually. Hopefully they will, you know, kind of use a little bit of common sense. <laughs> Obviously, they are under my command, so they're probably, you know, just going to do what they do best, and that is obviously kill things. So anyway, let's play, place these two sniper groups over there, and I think we're ready. Let's do it. Now, of course, it does give me a little bit of time, the, uh, the, the, the guys going off to the left does give me a little bit of time to actually eliminate some of the enemy forces and hopefully we will do an okay job at uh, clearing out most of the enemy units at the front at the very least because we obviously do want to make sure that our flanking units don't have too many difficulties I'm actually yeah they're just gonna start shooting at us and uh, technically you can actually see ah yeah I don't have any binoculars by the way but yeah anyway you can see here that it's actually kind of light so it's not really necessary for us to use the night vision, but I, I kind of feel like it does help us a little bit in target acquisition. And you know what? Me charging down here? That's probably not the best idea, is it? So let's go down here instead. And uh, maybe we'll spot a couple of people that are going to attempt to flank us at some point as well, and we just want to make sure that we don't succumb to their tactics. And, uh, oh, wow, we're... we're Really? A, a, a po oh well, yeah. Posner rifleman is probably going to get yes. He's probably going to get shot by a freedom sniper. Let's let's be honest. Anyway, uh, yeah. It, it seems like this companion over here is taking a little bit too long to get where I need her to go. So we're just going to shorten her route a little bit. And we probably want to move these guys just a little bit closer, a little bit closer. As I said, I feel like they're maybe not not in the most optimum area at the moment and we do have a person over there who I can kill there we go bear in mind that these guys predominantly will have veteran freedom guards and of course freedom snipers as well and they are going to be pretty difficult for us to deal with but hopefully we will prevail in the end it really depends am I being shot from over here yes I think I am hello Oh, he's just a militia I was literally thinking to myself he's a freedom sniper isn't he but no he wasn't Oh, there's a whole. Do you see? Do you see how many units they have over there? They have a huge amount of units in that, in that vicinity, oh, right over here. That is fiendish, very, very fiendish indeed. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to try and just kill this guy down here. Thank you very much. And then we are going to tell our units to. Oh my. Okay, that was, that was kind of harsh. I actually have no idea where those people were coming from. Okay, well we're going to tell our people to just get down here, basically, and uh, maybe go up by the little house, and, uh, oh, that was really bad, me losing that much armor, I don't even know where I was shot from, mm, well, that's how it goes, I guess, More veteran freedom guards getting shot once again, obviously, and we're just going to go behind here and do a little bit of healing. Probably should have taken better cover, actually. Now that they think about it, probably should have taken better cover. But that's just how it is. At least I didn't get shot again while I was healing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, those guys, yeah, they mean business. So we're just going to stay around here, because they seem to be advancing on our position, which is kind of, I guess, a little bit weird. But, all right, that's fine. And we'll tell these fellows to actually... Oh, yeah, there seems to be a little bit of pathfinding problems going on there, but it's all right. It's okay. Okay, there are some enemies around here, so we do need to be a little bit careful. Mm, I'm a bit worried about actually just advancing in general because any one of these units can be extremely effective at bursting me down. Like so. And I can't really see where he is either, which is really, really bad. Oh, 
Oh, that guy's not even alive anymore, but that one was. Is that guy... That's, that's mine. Why is he there? I have no idea. Well, hopefully he's going to be doing a good job. Is this... Is this Anna, actually? Yeah, this is Anna, actually. Wow, that is kind of amazing. Seeing her in her action stance, so to speak. Oh, Vera, I think, has gotten her first kill. Yeah, that guy's dead. Okay, so we don't have to worry about him. And, uh, yeah, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to just tell these guys to get up here. And uh, should I finally start telling my guys to actually just get in there? Or maybe I should just move them a little bit upward. Some of them are being killed kind of heavily here. But if I move these guys up right now... Oh, what? What are these snipers doing? They're, they're being completely wasted. Well, at the very least, look at that! Look at the kill feed right now. The kill feed is going very, very well indeed. We are absolutely slaughtering them where they stand. That's pretty fantastic. Oh, nice kill right there. If I do say so myself, that was very, very long range. Didn't expect to get anywhere with that, but I, I thought maybe you know, might try it a little bit. Well, yeah, exactly. Just needed to move them over the ridge. That was literally all I needed to do because they were kind of hiding behind a little bit of a hill there and that was the main reason why they were having any amount of difficulties actually doing anything. So it's kind of nice that we were able to, I suppose, penetrate that stalemate because we were just losing units. We were not actually gaining any ground or anything like that. So yeah, anyway, I'm actually going to tell a couple of people to retreat right now because I don't want them to actually die. And I think we have enough units to be able to finish this battle up. There's only 25 of the enemy remaining. Bear in mind that this is probably not going to be possible with the other factions. Because, let's face it, the other factions are slightly better than what the Chinivkan Front Rebellion has available to them. Because, of course, I'm not saying that the, uh, you know, the Freedom Snipers and the Veteran, uh, veteran Freedom uh, Soldiers, or whatever they're called, they're not actually that bad. They're just a little bit worse than the other factions units. And if we're going up against the ARF, for example, or a bunch of Poznan sharpshooters or something, then we might have some difficulties there. But it seems like our flanking action... Look at that. All those guys up on the ridge over there, that was an absolutely decisive blow against the enemy in this particular battle. Because if we didn't have those guys they probably would have been able to take us out from range with all their freedom snipers and everything. I, I might actually die here. I don't exactly know, but I'm trying to get to cover. Yeah, that guy... Yeah, the, these these fellows are, are, are dead still. So nothing to worry about that. There is actually someone around the corner here. Shoot him. And there's level 16. Thank you very much. Okay, that's great. That means I'll be able to get a couple more points in leadership and uh, that's going to be very nice for us and there's only 15 remaining okay so let's get our snipers shall we let's get our snipers to actually start you know start doing some stuff with their wonderful long range rifles and uh, do we have do we have enough survivability do we have enough toughness to actually send our people straight in i don't exactly know whether we do I'm actually wondering whether I can shoot through... Yeah, there we go. Take out that Freedom Sniper. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else want a piece of my peeking? Because <laughs> technically I'm peeking out here right now. No, it doesn't seem like it. Alright. There is someone around here, so I might actually end up getting myself killed. Uh, there's someone actually in the building right here who's... ...tending to shoot. Oh, I don't see him. Weird. Oh, there he is. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> he was like, I'm prone. No one could see me. 
And then it was just like, boom, 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 and he's gone. All right, well, I guess what we should do now is, I guess just charge straight on in. There doesn't seem to be much more that I can do about this. I'm gonna tell these guys to go around from the side. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, let's, let's actually do it properly this time. There we go. And you know what? Actually, let's tell them to go up on the ridge here as well. And maybe they'll get some decent enough vantage points to make it a little bit easier and a little bit less deadly. They're still deadly, bear that in mind. <laughs> Even though I said less deadly, but mm, it seems like they are still capable of very dangerous things. So that is obviously not great. I would have hoped that we would be able to at least maintain a little bit of survival here. Oh, I thought that guy was actually alive for a second. He seemed to be taking cover. And that one as well. <laughs> I hope that's going to be fixed as well. I'm pretty sure it is because it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of a simple fix there, but yeah. Anyway, uh, you, you, I guess you kind of know when the enemies are actually dead then because the ragdoll is, is obviously very much similar to them, to each other. So, you know, that kind of thing is going to be pretty easy, I feel. Anyway, uh, yeah, it seems like we know where the remaining units actually are. So I'm going to be making my way over there. Oh, hello. I'm dead. Yes, I'm dead. Oh well, never mind. That's absolutely fine because we can actually just tell our units to engage without us and we failed? There's only two enemies remaining. What? That is absolutely hilarious. Okay, well, uh... There you, there you go. Uh, apparently six enemies were capable of defeating, uh, how many? 22? We had 22 remaining? Right. Well, that's, that's very interesting to me. That is very, very interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to literally do this. Uh, should we, should we do this? This is, this is just kind of bad, isn't it? This is kind of bad, but, uh, I kind of feel like we should absolutely murder every single person here right now. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do, and I only have five HP, <laughs> but uh, we're gonna go in there. I'm not actually gonna do anything myself, I don't think, but we're gonna try and pick off a couple of people. Bear in mind, I don't have, I do have some med kits, I, I think, but uh, yeah, let's actually just maybe just see what's gonna happen here. They're all moving extremely fast, so I'm gonna just tell everyone to proceed with caution now, just so that we can actually eliminate that guy as soon as possible. We do have a couple of people over here as well. Bear in mind that our Poznan sharpshooters are going to be able to eliminate them very, very quickly from range. And uh, hopefully that's going to be the case. I'm actually very surprised. Very, very surprised that they were able to actually do anything there. I mean, yeah, you know, me getting myself killed in the, the last uh, last 10 or so enemies, that, that, that happens. But the auto-resolve, I think, that's a, that's a little bit harsh, in my opinion. But... Well, what can you do? Anyway, uh, yeah, we're gonna actually take these guys. We're gonna take the- oh, never mind, never mind. Okay, that enemy was actually killed, so it doesn't really matter right now. Let's tell everyone to, like, move around here. We're just gonna go on a sweeping mission, basically. An absolute sweeping mission here. I need to be very careful, though. I'm at 11 HP. And, uh, yeah, there are still a couple of enemies, like so. And, uh... Yeah, we did lose another ARF Spec Ops guy, which is fine, but it's kind of weird that we're actually losing anyone at all because there are so many units in that one space right there. I guess grenades. I mean, grenades would probably be the best against us right now. But I'm going to move ahead anyway just to make sure that we, you know, maybe, maybe we can help out a little bit, offer a little bit of suppression here and there. But obviously me getting shot is probably going to kill me instantly, so... Let's hope that that does not happen. But it seems like we're going to be fine because there's only five enemies remaining right now. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think we're going to be good. And most of these guys are actually freedom snipers by the looks of things as well. Let's just spread these guys out a little bit. 
there we are. Yeah, I hope you'll forgive the messiness because obviously <laughs> we're just wanting to eliminate these guys. There's only two enemies remaining right now, so we should be absolutely fine. And uh, I'm still absolutely shocked by the auto resolve right there in the previous in the previous bout because it was just like, yes, 22 against six. That should be a foregone conclusion. I mean, I'm pretty sure that that would work. I mean, yeah, you know, I was expecting definitely to lose a couple of units. Don't get me wrong, auto resolve is always kind of risky in that regard. You know, I was definitely expecting to lose, I don't know, maybe 10 units out of the uh, out of the 22 to eliminate the last six because obviously, you know, paying a little bit of a penalty for getting killed or something like that, obviously that's kind of to be expected. But if our units had stayed al well, if I had stayed alive, then our units would have been absolutely fine eliminating those last six with maybe losing, I don't know, maybe no one, maybe one or two. So I think the auto resolve obviously does need to be a bit more, you know, just have a little bit of tweaking to do. And that is, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, it's obvious. I think the developers actually do know that anyway, because they've worked on it in the past. And uh, yeah, obviously at that point, uh, it was very, very welcome because back then it was even more brutal than it is just there. So yeah, it was a prime example of how brutal the uh, the auto resolve can be. Anyway, uh, I don't exactly know where the last enemy is. Can I go up these stairs? I can. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm actually kind of actually kind of wondering where the enemy is right now. I guess I'm gonna try and track him down. I, I, do I hear some gunshots? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, I guess I'm gonna try and track him down then. Oh, never mind. Okay, well, phew. Yes, so we lost one there, but yeah, you know, we kind of lost a lot more than that. But yeah, so I think it was actually kind of worth it to deal with a 92 strong town, so I think it's pretty good. Anyway, there you go. That's, uh, that's it. We have taken and indeed eliminated the Chinivkan Front Rebellion from the game. There you go. The Chinook Confront Rebellion has been destroyed. It's really nice how it actually comes up immediately that it has been destroyed. And apparently, uh, oh yes, there we go. Apparently Minov is now under siege by a battalion of Pozna. And we're going to be dealing with those guys in the next episode. So I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.